What's your name? Uh, now. Right now, it's now. Let's say it again? Uh, now. now. Right now. Now. Yeah. Okay. You, you said now, right now, it's now. Is that what you just said? Yeah. That's a fun, I love it. It confused easier, me a little bit, right? but it was very fun in hindsight. Okay. That's awesome. So now you're going to have uh, a minute to pitch. Are you ready? Yes. Awesome. All right. Time is now. All right. What are you building? <laughs> so I'm building Livestock, the first AI calendar that uses your health data to optimize time management. Um, high performers these days are more health conscious than ever. And these people are using devices like Aura, Whoop, and Apple Watch. But, uh, and then despite all the data, most people still get uh, their way through the uh, day, like pushing through low energy periods, um, struggling with focus, or uh, you know burning out. So that's why we built Lifestack. Uh, it connects your calendar, to-do list, wearables, to help you schedule your tasks and activities at the best time, uh, factoring in your circadian rhythms, uh, stress levels, and calendar events. Um, since launching last July, we've grown to more than 100 paying users and uh, have been featured by top productivity tool influencers as well. Uh, my co-founders and I previously built and sold Japan's largest neurotech media outlet. And I also come from Japan's top AI research lab, uh, giving us the like expertise to build this product. Um, our vision is to be the go-to health productivity app for high performers, just like Notion and Superhuman are today. Thank you. Well done. I think we just did three time-related pitches in yeah. a row. That's crazy. <laughs> um, I don't think we've had many in the history of the feedback loop, so it's a, it's a very time-focused day. I'm fascinated. Um, let me ask a few clarifying questions. So, uh, which research lab, by the way, did you? Which research lab in Japan were you part of? Um, Oh, Matsuo, I don't think you know, but okay. I graduated from Tokyo Very University. No, yeah. um, I was just curious if it's the, there's one that always publishes interesting papers, so it's just in my mind. Oh, interesting. Which one? Um, oh, I don't remember the name. Yeah, okay. uh, I'll, I'll try to find it just to talk about it with you later. When you think about the notion here of putting time on people's calendar off the notion, uh, you use the word health mm -hmm. in this. Um, I've seen micro apps and Chrome extensions and calendar apps that do this off of like optimization. Like they'll be like, hey, give us the task. We'll put it on your calendar. We'll mm -hmm. tell you when to do this. Or we'll try to suggest times based on your mood and report the mood to us inside the app. I guess like, is this just an extension of that? Uh, or is there something deeper going on in, in uh, the under the hood? Well, like, first of all, is it clockwise or... There's like... Um, play may I? There's a couple. There's motion. Oh, motion. Yeah, they don't track your motion. Okay. Uh, no, no, sorry. They I don't, don't know. Track your yeah, emotions, I've but... tried a ton of the not because I'm that yeah. interested in what they've been doing, but um, there's there's I, when I say tracking emotion, I think it was self-reported, so that could be right, an interesting element. Right. Exactly. So we're the well, as far as I know, we're the first one that uses health data. So uh, that's kind of unique. Like um, so health data example can be a few examples. Yeah, like sleep data, uh, stress levels. Um, our like the biggest portion of our current algorithm is your sleep data, and we calculate your circadian rhythms. It's the type of like body rhythm. Um, but pretty much based on your sleep data. And uh, we say, like, for example, um, like 9 to 11 p.m. About a.m. is your, like, highest peak time. That's where you want to, like, tackle your most important task. And then, like, if it's, like, 2, 3 p.m., maybe, like, you have, like, lower energy. That's where you want to, like, tackle. Uh, so the user, to, like, self-uploads a bunch of this data? Uh, it pretty much, like, automatically syncs. Okay, like, got it. Yeah, through through Apple Health. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there's a way I want to ask this question that'll just, like, invite you to to, to give me whatever rant you want as mm -hmm. a response. With these sorts of products in health and quantified self generally, and it's interesting, there was this trend towards this quantified right. self, right? And it's like, it started, I feel like, with Ferris in like 2012, mm -hmm. and then and then wearables came into play, Whoop, sure. Aura, 8Sleep, blah, blah, blah. And now, if you search any of these brands on um, Twitter, X, whatever, it's kind of backlash time on quantified self. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. It seems for two reasons. You tell me, add to this if you, if you want to, but it's like, a, people find these devices unreliable. It's kind of like, hey, um, it was interesting to track all of this, but why is the aura telling me something different from Loop than from my watch? This must mean there's not yet universal theory here. Mm -hmm. And then B, I think because a lot of few people eventually found it wasn't actionable, right? So even if it was reliable, that was part of the reason it wasn't actionable. Is it, okay, is it reliable? And then otherwise too, it's like, can I really take, do I really want to take actions for this? Relate that to your approach, because mm -hmm. I can I can imagine the the, the front line of your answer is going to be we're all making it actionable by changing your calendar. True, true. But um, <laughs> I want you to get into the weeds of what hasn't worked uh -huh. and and where you think you're you're doing this from a science perspective, where you're doing this from a we're just giving you data and tools. It's up to you to use them well. Yeah. Um, where do you believe it's going? 
Um, so first of all, I was actually, I, I'm, I'm too young to like experience that quantified self movement. Um, but, um, <laughs> and then I, I was in Japan too. So like, it, it, Japan, it was a, not, not a thing. Um, but, um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, the, first of all, accuracy, I think it's, uh, I, I agree. Like it's not like medical grade. Oh, oh, although like, you know, like for example, Apple watches, AFib detection right, or, right, or right. birth rate, they are like, you know, FDA approved. So the accuracy itself has significant, significantly improved, but still, yeah, it's not like perfect, but, um, uh, still like these people, um, are using it for like to like sort of like understand their trends, not like they, um, like minute by minute, uh, right. less mechanistic and more relative. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, and then I, I, I might be a little biased, but I see a lot of my like friends, like friends around me are like starting to buy these devices too. So it's, I, I still see, uh, you know, some trends there. And then also like Aura raised 200 million or something last year. Right. So, um, yeah, I still have a hope in that. And then in terms of like actionable insights, yeah, that's definitely something that we're trying to do with calendar, uh, especially like, um, you know, I, I love Aura, but when I use, when I open their app, it's just e either like just in the morning or just like, you know, the night before we're going to bed. Uh, you know, it's since we're a calendar app, we go, usually like people go to the calendar during the day, you know, like th pretty much every time. So um, that's something that we're hoping for, like, you know, putting health data onto like their like daily workflow. Mm. Yeah. Um, how reliable are the recommendations or suggestions you make in terms of people? experiencing a benefit i don't know even how you know this so like maybe your answer is thematic but like i wonder when you tell someone hey because of this thing we've seen here's the place we think this belongs in your calendar what's going into that how reliable is it how much is it you know a combination of that plus best practice mm -hmm. so uh it's the, like i said it's definitely not a medical advice uh so we just say that this is a baseline um still like people find it valuable that's why we're you know they're paying um in terms of like like uh like reliability, um, I think there's still some like room for us to like you know improve. Uh, yeah, if, so, if that so answers far, your question. Okay, um, and then it's it's mostly reorganizing either my events or inserting tasks I should do into my e calendar. Yeah. Yeah, for example, like if you have a big meeting and then you maybe like get tired, then like we're going to suggest you take probably like, why don't you take a five minute walk um, after this since you don't have any, you know, like event after this. Yeah. Something. So how much of this is going to wind up being workflow productivity SaaS versus the health stuff? I don't say that in a bad way of like your answer mm -hmm. could be mostly the first and I'd still be like, oh, interesting. Yeah. Like, because I could imagine a lot more features there mm -hmm. versus like the other thing is mostly like an intelligence layer. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where do you think the team will spend most of their time? Uh, at the moment, we're spending most of our time on productivity SaaS side because like there's so many features that we're lacking right now. But once we uh, make it more like, you know, kind of stable, then we're going to add more like health related metrics like nutrition, uh, exercise data, mm. things like that. Yeah. How far along are you? Uh, seven months since we're on the market. Have you yeah. raised money? Yeah. Uh, but for previous product. Okay. So, so under different. the same company though. Yeah. How much ish? Uh, 600K. Um, super interesting. Okay. Um, I have a, a broad thought mm -hmm. and then a suggestion mm -hmm. as to how to maybe rewrite the picture yeah, a little bit. Really, really love to hear that. Yeah. The, the, the broad thought is, um, there have been a couple startups who have come on to the stage to pitch something related to, I say that I'm going to use the, the, a negatively loaded term in a not negative way, like pseudoscience. Mm -hmm. So for example, there was somebody that was doing like gut microbiome, which is fine, but then recommending supplements. Mm. Um, there was somebody else that was doing some wearable where the data, was, like kind of like I would have mentioned about these other things, wasn't yet reliable. And I would ask them, you know, kind of the question of like, okay, mm -hmm. is, where is this in evidence versus where is this thematic, et cetera, et cetera. And everyone has, you know, a certain answer. And I go, okay, I have a lot of biases. Mm -hmm. But the best way to pitch something like this to me is to embrace what you, by the way, I think more willingly gave into, mm -hmm. which is, than they did, um, which is, hey, yeah, a lot of this is data we're tracking, other people's data we're tracking that might not be uh, the most sturdy today. Mm -hmm. But the point in some of these cases is to build pattern recognition, ingest the data. This is where I think it would be interesting actually for you to buy a little bit more into the where this goes over time and say, hey, 
because we have the example here would be you saying something like because we are tracking this data from all these sources and we're making recommendations for the first time we can try to see if there are any patterns. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A friend of mine is the founder of Nucleus Genomics. Oh uh, yeah, I know. You know Nucleus? Uh, anyone know Nucleus Genomics in the crowd? It's like new twenty three and me. Uh, I have a whole interview with him on the YouTube channel. You check it out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so. Um, the, bas- the basic difference between 23andMe and Nucleus is uh, 100% of your genome is mapped versus 23andMe was doing very little. Mm-hmm. But the more interesting thing he told me that made me think differently about his startup, he can kind of run unofficial studies. Mm-hmm. So as an example, he has so much data from these tracked genomes right. that might not yet have a pattern to it. Mm-hmm. But he can try to identify, well, I have all this user data. Is there some trend that we should study. Is there something that I see? All of these users also have this attribute. Mm-hmm. And, and therefore, Nucleus not only can be like, well, we know from science, here's what happens to genomes and their mechanistic effects, but we're looking at trend data and we're noticing net new things. So if everyone with this certain gene can sleep less, but we've never been able to identify that before, now we can because of all the user data. There's right. something similar here. And again, with yep. all these startups where I go like, and that assuages the part of my brain that goes, mm-hmm. this might not be real. And then you don't have to also pitch it to the users. It's like to the user, you be like, it's fun, whatever, but we're collecting this data to hopefully uh, make relative recommendations and use AI to give everyone a sense of what are the best practices, et cetera, over a pool. I think that's really interesting. I see. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I always had this like in our team and then like, yeah. you know, that's actually like, that's how it started. Like we, um, and like I said, I have two more co-founders. We're big fans of wearable tech, mm-hmm. but one thing that I, I don't like about wearable tech is um, it kind of lacks contextual data. Right. Like, for example, if you see an increase in your heart rate, it might be because of a workout or a stressful meeting. And then, like, when it comes to calendar, it has, well, like, it kind of depends, but uh, it has some contextual data of, like, what's going on in your life. Mm. So uh, that's, how, yeah, exactly. That's how it started. But, like, you know, like, when I first to... Uh, uh, other investors, they were like, "Oh, what what is this guy get, uh, you know <laughs> talking about?" So I, I just like removed that part. Yeah, from my pitch, well, this but. might be where my suggestion comes into play. By the way, another thought I have for you: uh, I I'm a coach for founders and executives, and one of the things I recommend to people. It's funny that this is coming up. And I hadn't thought of it until now is like calendar painting, mm-hmm. where I tell them go mm-hmm. back retrospectively over the week you just had. Red on calendar meetings that took energy from you, yellow on calendar meetings that were okay, but a little bit a lot, green on things that gave you energy. Right. And if you map that over a day, you can redo your calendar for the next week mm-hmm. and don't put a red. Like maybe it's the one-on-one with your boss you always hate right before the one-on-one with your report Mm -hmm. who you like, but the red keeps causing yellow because you come out of that meeting with tension. So I find all that quite interesting. The context is is really interesting from that basis. I think infusing the pitch with this takes it to a different level Mm -hmm. and embracing the parts of it that maybe you wouldn't because it doesn't sound net new, like even the workflow stuff, Mm -hmm. suggesting that, hey... Like not only yes, we're we're like the the layer that's getting this health data, and we're building some AI stuff to analyze and understand it, but more of what we're doing is we're giving you tools to action on this data. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily that we know exactly what you should do, but we're building correlations. We're building. You get to see the sleep when you decide what to do at the calendar, whether to take our recommendation. We're building workflow, and again, there's a better way to visualize that for somebody or talk to them about it, but. We're the first place where those two things come together. Mm-hmm. And if you make that the pitch, then I think an investor can go, oh, I'm going to draw not only your conclusions, but the other conclusions of what else that could become over time. Versus, I think, the reason it probably went wrong before is you're going, well, there's lots of context in your calendar. And if we use that context to make your meetings, your days more efficient, you're going to have more energy. They go, I don't know if I believe that. Yeah. That's a thing they can say. Versus you go, we introduced these two weapons, your health data and workflow stuff on your calendar, use them together. Then they go, oh, what are all of the potential outputs? Mm-hmm. There are actually lots of them. And if you start there, again, it's like I, I recommend to a lot of early stage founders who have like more, uh, you know, kind of interesting or novel ideas. You're a set of experiments in the early days. Right. And right. you want an investor to go, I want to put money against those experiments rather than later stage founders, which are like, oh, you're fire and I want to pour gasoline on a fire. Mm-hmm. And so pitch more in that first. Okay. And I think you'll actually find a lot of people who, just like me on this stage, went like, oh, huh, 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 you know, it's like, and again, I think a more product-oriented investor, whether they're an angel or even an institutional, yeah. is far more likely to like this because the, the let's say, SaaS investor or something like that, the growth stage person, they're going to need so much data before they get involved. Like, they're not going to, unless they're just fascinated with calendars and they had a preconceived thesis, you're not going to win them anyway. Mm-hmm. So go for that more product and design-oriented and it's also your background, right? That's the yeah, other thing exactly. I was thinking about. Like everything about you, like to me and building this is interesting because of where it might go. But none of those things might be 
what we can predict today. Mm-hmm. I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Thanks. Thanks. Absolutely. Yeah. Great job. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. Well, that was fun. We got six founders up here. I'm going to do a few takeaways to wrap us up here. Um, really interesting concepts, by the way, across the board. Uh, just fascinated and, and, you know, I think I went along with a bunch of them because I was trying to you know, kind of tweak what I understood about it all. And that last bit of feedback, I think, is the thematic feedback for the night is think as a founder, what is the objection? What is the thing that's going on for me? But also, what are the set of experiments that I need to tell an investor that we're going to run with their money? Because a lot of what they're thinking about is not, unless again, you're at the growth stage, that they have a thesis that they know will or won't work, or that you have a thesis uh, that you know will or won't work, but it's a broader umbrella, right? It's like, there's a set of experiments you'll run in time tracking. There's a set of experiments you'll run on a parent's calendar. There's a set of experiments you'll run in real estate. Um, and I want to understand the results of it because I believe the problem's big enough. I believe the potential solutions might make enough revenue. I believe the pain point is interesting. When you go a little too far down the funnel and you're like anchored in your solution, then you need far more evidence, right? You need to already be um, having a lot more users. And then when I dig into your users, they really need to be changing their behavior for me to believe that it's going to grow. When you live in the experiments, it's far more about, do I believe in the value of the experiment? Do I believe in the potential for that experiment to give me a secret that no one else in the world knows yet? Me and you as a founder, right? It's like, oh, if I invest in you and that experiment, we might have two years we're the only ones, or us and our one competitor, who know anything about how awesome this is going to be as we build and we build the market and we build, acquire the users, et cetera. So that's my first takeaway. And my biggest is for everyone to think, again, what set of experiments am I trying to get people to invest in? And Storytel anchored more towards that um, than purely on outcome. The second is just, you know, across the board, I'm fascinated by how many of these founders didn't reveal some things early in the minute pitch that were interesting later. Um, so whether it was a status to how many folks they had using the app uh, in a certain geography or you know, maybe tying their background in a little bit more directly. Even in a minute pitch, the suggestion I make to a lot of people as startup founders or job seekers, uh, which is you know, my, my startup's work, is drive-bys are the most effective thing. When I tell people, hey, add this context, why didn't you bring this up, et cetera, it's not to say, and actually the last founder did it well, now did it well, where uh, like he had his last 10 seconds was a, a few different things. Like I, I had the startup. Here's what I did in Japan. I sold this thing or me and my team sold this thing. Very quick drive-bys because all it's doing is it's creating a little bit of bookmark in my head or it's creating an interest marker in my head that I'm either going to use to view the rest of your pitch. So for example, if you have a certain degree, now I'm going to use that lens to validate, oh, you know what you're doing in this area. You have the degree. So that's one thing you can do. Or it can be a, hey, I wonder that can, what, what that means and what that can imply if it's interesting. So for example, the um, publication that he sold, I was like, oh, interesting. So he's building a time tracking app, Neurotech publication. I assume they like talked about brain behavior or wearables. Like I assumed so much because of that, that I could return to in a later meeting and go, well, I want to know more. Like, what did you learn from this? And what does it give you? Is it a secret, again, a secret advantage that I have as an investor? That's going to make me want to act and give you money because now I know something that I think other people might not. And so by driving by that really quickly, again, it's a bookmark they can come back to later because they think it could be something novel. Thank you all so much for coming. Have a great rest of your night. Thank you.